Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're all healthy and safe at home. Uh, let us continue with our uh, chapter 4 boundary linear operators. So, in this lecture, we'll be defining a new concept about uh, what is meant by epsilon net. Okay, so the definition is as follows let x be any metric space and a be a subset of x. A set script A. Uh, which is contained in X is called an epsilon net of the subset A if and only if for every element X in A there exists an element in the script A such that the distance from X and Y is less than epsilon right. I hope you are getting the picture we have a metric space and a subset of a metric space okay and script A is another subset of that metric space uh, which contains some values of the matrix space, uh, which contains certain values, and that script A, okay, that is it is a set. That set forms an epsilon net if uh, for every value we take in A, we, we can obtain uh, there exists a value in script A such that the difference is always less than or equal to epsilon. Are you getting the picture? I hope you guys are getting the picture. So, corresponding to any subset, we can form a epsilon net. Okay. So, epsilon net is basically a subset which consists of some elements of the metric space uh, which satisfy the condition that for any for the subset uh, that we are choosing, uh, the distance between the elements in the subset and this epsilon net will be less than epsilon, and that's why it's called as an epsilon net. Okay. So, now we shall do a lemma lemma 4.3.3 uh, it is an if and only if condition that states that uh, m is relatively compact if and only if for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a finite epsilon net in m so by introducing the definition of epsilon net we are able to define or derive an if and only if condition for a space to be relatively compact so m is relatively compact if and only if for every epsilon greater than 0 note in, note that for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a finite epsilon net in m so let's move on to the proof of this lemma so we shall uh, we have to prove both the sides both the conditions so first let us suppose that um, suppose that m is uh, relatively compact or uh, let us uh, suppose that there is some epsilon dot okay hmm, such that there is no finite epsilon dot net in the metric space m so this is an if and only if condition so we are proving we are considering m is relatively compact and we are we need to prove that for every epsilon greater than zero uh, there exists an finite epsilon net so we are proving the controversy method so we are assuming that there exists one epsilon not such that there is no finite epsilon not net in m okay m is relatively compact or m is pre-compact keep that in mind and we are assuming that there exists one epsilon naught such that there exists no finite epsilon naught net in m right so now as there exists no finite epsilon naught net what i'm going to do is i'm going to take an element x1 which is an element of m and uh, i'm going to choose x2 an element of m such that uh, they are different such as a uh, norm of x1 minus x2 is greater than or equal to epsilon naught there is no finite epsilon naught if it was less than or equal to epsilon naught then that will be a part of the epsilon naught net right so uh, i am choosing x1 belong to m and x2 belongs to m such that norm x1 minus x2 is greater than or equal to epsilon naught now i'm going to repeat this process again and again that is next i'm going to take x1 and x2 element of m and i am going to choose x3 element of m such that 
they are norms that is norm x1 minus x3 is greater than or equal to epsilon naught and norm of x2 minus x3 is again greater than or equal to epsilon naught okay so in this manner now i'm going to if we continue this process if the set sequence or the set xn were n or uh, x i sorry x i where i varies from 1 to n minus 1 is chosen already okay then i will choose uh, an x n element of m okay uh, such that what happens norm of x1 minus xn is greater than or equal to epsilon naught epsilon naught uh, then norm x2 minus xn is greater than or equal to epsilon naught and so on norm of xn minus 1 minus xn is also greater than or equal to epsilon naught okay so in this way uh, i'm going to form a sequence that we have seen so now uh, i can make sure that such an xn always exists in our space m why because exists in m because if not if such an x does not uh, exist okay if not consider the set consider the set x dot x1 x1 sorry not x dot x1 x2 etc xn minus 1 okay if we choose this set then clearly x1 minus xn will be less than or equal to epsilon naught right then norm x1 x2 minus xn will be less than or equal to epsilon naught and so on so this set will form an epsilon naught net right a finite epsilon naught net but this is not the case because we have assumed that the space m has no finite epsilon naught net so i hope the concept is clear what we did was we chose x1 first and we took x2 such that x1 minus x2 is greater than or equal to epsilon naught that is possible as long as we are considering that epsilon naught net does not exist and uh, with the help of that we formed a sequence or we formed a set of elements uh, x1 x2 etc xn minus 1 and uh, after choosing all those elements we chose another element xn in m itself uh, which satisfies the condition that norm x1 minus xn is greater than or equal to epsilon naught and so on so such and uh, we also have seen that we can it is clear that such an xn always exists why because if such an xn does not exist that is if norm x1 minus xn is not greater than or equal to epsilon naught if we consider the set x1 x2 etc xn minus 1 it will form a finite epsilon naught net that is not possible so uh, now uh, uh, what we have stated just now is that uh, we have x1 minus xn is uh, greater than or equal to epsilon naught x1 x2 minus xn is greater than or equal to epsilon naught and so on x n minus 1 minus xn is also greater than or equal to epsilon naught so this is what we had stated in the end and uh, with this condition in mind the if you consider the sequence sequence xn okay that is clearly an element uh, or a sequence in m so this sequence cannot have a cauchy subsequence right because cannot have a cauchy's subsequence why because for uh, any uh, sequence you have a cauchy subsequence what must be 
let's have norm of x n minus x m should be less than epsilon for some epsilon greater than zero and for every n comma m greater than equal to n right but we have seen just now that uh, all the norms is greater than equal to epsilon not so we can see that the sequence x n cannot have a cauchy subsequence now this is a contradiction why this is a contradiction to the fact that m is relatively compact or pre compact okay so if we have assumed so our assumption is wrong that is if there exists some epsilon not which such that epsilon not net is not there um, there is no epsilon not net in m we get a contradiction to the fact that m is pre compact so for every therefore for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a finite epsilon net so this is one part of the proof now let's move on to the other part that is we are going to suppose that for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a finite epsilon net right so conversely suppose that suppose that for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a finite epsilon net in n okay now we have to prove that m is relatively compact now suppose for every k okay belongs to n uh let us take epsilon k to be less than or equal to 1 by 2k hmm mm, so let us uh, choose this epsilon k in such a manner then there exists a epsilon k net in m right because for every epsilon there exists finite epsilon net so for epsilon k also there will be an ex epsilon k net in the space m so in m okay now we need to prove that m is pre compact so for that we are going to choose a sequence in m so let xn where n varies from 1 to infinity be any sequence and we will show that it has a cauchy's subsequence right we will find we will find a cauchy's subsequence for this sequence okay so let's see how we are going to do that now consider a finite epsilon 1 net consider a finite epsilon 1 net okay then corresponding to every corresponding to every element in the epsilon 1 net we can find we can find a ball of radius we can find a ball of radius less than epsilon 1 right we can find a ball in that particular sequence that is uh, clear by the definition of the epsilon 1 net so corresponding to every epsilon 1 net uh, every element in the epsilon 1 net we can find an element such that norm of that element minus uh, the element in the epsilon net is less than or equal to epsilon 1 so we can find a ball uh, or we can find a set of elements uh, whose radius uh, which forms a ball whose radius is less than epsilon 1 okay so in this manner this is true for every element so what happens is it actually it actually divides the given sequence okay it actually divides the sequence between finite number of 
balls around the net points around the net points right so uh, corresponding to every uh, element in that epsilon 1 net uh, the sequence will be divided into different balls small balls around the net points uh, if you take one element and uh, in the epsilon 1 net we can find some elements in this space or correspond in that particular sequence such that its uh, radius is less than epsilon 1 so we can find it, uh, that the sequence will be divided between uh, into finite number of balls now the sequence which we had chosen was infinite right now as the sequence is infinite there will be at least there exist at least one ball okay which contains one ball containing infinite members of the sequence right there will be at least one ball we are saying that corresponding to every element every element in epsilon 1 we are forming different open balls around the sequence so the sequence is divided and as the sequence is infinite there will be at least one ball containing infinite numbers now what we are going to do is consider consider a subsequence inside this particular ball which contains infinite members okay inside this ball and uh, let us denote it by x n 1 okay we are choosing epsilon 1 net so x n 1 where n varies from 1 to infinity now instead of choosing the sequence xn we are going to consider this sequence xn1 and repeat the same process okay now similarly consider epsilon2 net okay in which sequence in the sequence sequence xn of 1 the one which we have just now obtained okay and in a similar process we shall obtain another infinite sequence by the name xn of 2 because we are choosing epsilon 2 net okay in this manner and proceed in the same manner and so on so what we can obtain is we can get we get a subsequence xn of k n varies from 1 to infinity corresponding to epsilon k xn of k xn of k minus 1 sorry xn of k minus 1 of xn of k right you are obtaining a subsequence xn2 of xn of 1 and we are obtaining a subsequence xn1 of xn and so on so we will obtain a subsequence xn k minus 1 of xn of k uh, and uh, clearly the radius of this ball is less than epsilon k so we can say that norm of xm k minus xn of k will be less than or equal to epsilon k for every m comma n belongs to n okay that is clear because uh, we are obtaining a subsequence corresponding to the epsilon k net so we can say that this xn of k will form a cauchy subsequence of the sequence that we have chosen okay and we had a uh, chosen the sequence arbitrarily so this result holds for any sequence so i hope the construction 
is clear so this will be that is sequence x and k will be the cauchy subsequence of the sequence x and so every sequence will have a cauchy subsequence and thus we can prove that the space m is relatively compact or it is pre compact so this was our lemma that uh, stated that if m is relatively compact if and only if every for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a finite epsilon net so that's it for today thank you stay home and stay safe